conference. Uh, press conference uh, organized by the uh, Alliance for Liberal and Democrats uh, for uh, Europe uh, to present uh, to you uh, uh, a comprehensive plan uh, that we think is necessary uh, to resolve uh, the crisis uh, uh, around Greece uh, and uh, the Euro. And I do that in, in the presence of uh, Kouyanis, who is the leader of the Democratic Alliance, you know, former Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Greece, uh, and actually the leader of the Democratic Alliance, a new political party that has been created uh, a few weeks ago now uh, in uh, uh, Greece. Uh, Mr. Skilakakis, who is a member of the European Parliament and uh, uh, from the Democratic Alliance, and is now a member of the ALDE, and Yorgo Chatsimakakis, who is, you think that he is a Greek, but he's not, he's a German. Uh, but uh, when we are talking about, uh, about, uh, about the Greek crisis, it's always interesting to have also a German view on the, uh, uh, on the uh, issue. Uh, we have uh, given to you, I hope that everybody has it, a paper, uh, a paper uh, concerning this uh, comprehensive plan. And, and mainly uh, what this plan is saying is that we need to turn away in the way we are uh, tackling uh, the Greek crisis. Uh, PASOK at the one side uh, with the actual uh, Greek government yeah, is uh, not really capable uh, to present uh, all the reforms that are necessary. We are presenting reforms that are necessary, but maybe not uh, reforms that are going far enough. Um, and then the other side, uh, the other political party, the Lea Democratica, is really not uh, taking his responsibility. Uh, to, uh, uh, to find uh, a way out uh, for uh, the crisis uh, around uh, Greece. And what we are proposing uh, today uh, is mainly a two-track approach. A two-track approach uh, to solve uh, the Greek crisis in uh, a more sustainable, more comprehensive uh, way than what is actually uh, on uh, the table. Is asking first of all uh, a, a more uh, realistic uh, fiscal consolidation program uh, that is absolutely needed uh, in, in Greece. Uh, and why we are saying a bolder, a faster, and a more realistic fiscal consolidation program? Because that is absolutely needed, and we think that what it has to be changed is that instead of doing uh, half of the effort, 50% of the effort on the expenditures and 50% on the revenue side, we think that if you want to have a realistic and a real fiscal uh, consolidation program, you need to do at least two-thirds uh, on public expenditure and only one-third on uh, revenue. And the second uh, 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 important track uh, that is completely missing for the moment in the approach is it's not only necessary to talk about uh, austerity, savings, reforms, that is necessary, and we think even that a bolder package is necessary with more efforts on the expenditure side, but we are also saying there is, is a two-track approach is, is needed. That means we need also a chapter on growth and investment, because Greece can not survive, Greece can not be rescued, if at the same time of an austerity package, there is also not a package on investment and growth. And what we are proposing, and you shall see that in, in the paper, is a, a number of uh, measures that can be taken, uh, guarantees given by the European Union to private uh, investment, uh, uh, using uh, money inside the European uh, budget uh, to uh, reanimate uh, the Greek uh, national economy, also um, using uh, possibilities, financial possibilities of the European in Investment Bank to also uh, increase uh, the growth uh, again in, in Greece. And on top of that, uh, we are proposing that a, a certain percentage of the uh, privatization program, and our proposal is 25%, uh, to use 25% of the uh, result of the privatization program, not for fiscal consolidation, but to put it, to attribute it to a fund for investment 
in Greece. So that the result of the privatization is not only uh, used for the fiscal consolidation, but an important part is also used for real investment uh, in, in, in Greece. So that is our uh, two-track approach uh, that uh, we are proposing. On the one side, a more realistic fiscal consolidation with a higher effort on the expenditure side and less on the revenue side, because otherwise you're killing uh, the uh, further degrading economy. And on the other side, uh, a, a, a package of measures, guarantees by the European Union uh, to uh, uh, stimulate uh, the uh, uh, economic growth and investment. Because we have to know for the moment, private investment is stopped, is blocked in, in Greece. And you need guarantees by the European Union, European investment bank, and we think also a part of the privatization program to relaunch also uh, investment and, and growth. And that's the two-track approach that is completely missing today uh, in, in what's happening uh, in Greece. If that is happening, we are saying that is the, the idea what we are saying today, and I think that uh, Mr. Bakoyami said that say in a, in a more firm way than I can uh, uh, do it, we need on this a political consensus in Greece. Um, you, you know, uh, it is for the uh, other uh, countries of the Eurozone very difficult uh, to start additional rescue programs if there is not at least uh, a minimum of political uh, consensus uh, between the main political parties on such an approach. And we think that our proposal can maybe be a breakthrough in, yeah, in, in, in the situation that is now completely blocked uh, between uh, PASOK at one side and the neo Democratica at the other side. And if this rescue uh, approach, this new approach, uh, could be uh, uh, adopted by uh, all the uh, main political parties in Greece, we think also, and that's the other part of the uh, proposal, uh, that uh, the Eurozone members have to do an effort by lowering the interest rate that they are asking to Greece. You know that today Greece has to pay a higher interest rate to Europe than to the International Monetary Fund. To the International Monetary Fund is 3.5%, to Europe is 5%. That is not uh, a very serious way of, of, of uh, tackling the problem. And the third thing what we are saying is that also bondholders shall do uh, an effort. And, and you know that between uh, Mrs. Uh, Merkel and Mrs. Sarkozy, we have already an agreement on the way uh, they uh, should do it by prolonging the period of the loans. Uh, we think that there are also other possibilities, for example, by swapping uh, existing uh, uh, low-rated Greek bonds in uh, AAA-rated EFSF bonds, uh, uh, a small package then of uh, AAA-rated uh, uh, EFSF bonds, uh, what could be uh, maybe a more sustainable uh, solution uh, also for the bondholders uh, them, uh, themselves. That's uh, what we are uh, presenting uh, today uh, to you uh, at uh, a moment where uh, uh, it is very crucial uh, that uh, we show a way out of uh, this uh, crisis. And the last remark, um, this uh, package and this proposal is naturally also linked to another problem, to the economic governance package that the European Parliament is for the moment discussing uh, with uh, the uh, Council. And on that package, I can tell you that the European Parliament shall be very uh, bold. Uh, what we want is a, a real change, a bold stability pact with automaticity, with real sanctions, where it is not necessary that there is first of all uh, a decision by the Council before measures can be launched. But it's still in the pact. Parliament has a majority to say no to this, and we go until the end because we think that we have also the specialists behind us. Yesterday, for example, Mr. Lipsky, head of the International Monetary Fund for a certain period, apparently, only. Uh, but Mr. Lipsky has uh, made a very important uh, declaration. He said it's necessary that the Europeans are going forward in their economic integration. I have to tell you, if you read what Mr. Lipsky has said, I thought he was a member of the Spinelli group, but he is not, I can tell you. 
but it was exactly uh, the proposals for a bold economic governance that the parliament is now discussing and debating uh, with uh, the council. So also with the support not only of Mr. Fischer and the ECB, but also now of the International Monetary Fund, I think time is right to, to make this enormous uh, uh, step forward uh, that uh, the, the European Union is uh, needed. And I give immediately the uh, to uh, the uh, Bakker. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me start by saying that I am grateful to Kiefer Hofstadt and the other group for their support today uh, for the exit of uh, Greece's economy from the impasse um, uh, we feel we are today. It is important because it's uh, the first political group who really proposes a very concrete program which gives hope to the Greek people. Greece had a very tough time the last year. The Greek people heard from everybody just austerity, 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 measures, 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 who were unfortunately unsuccessful until now. So the, the program which you have in front of you is really very seriously looking at the Greek economy and proposing, of course, a very strict consolidation plan, but on the other side, also the possibility for the recovery of the Greek economy by uh, funding new investment which my country needs if we want to create new jobs and, uh, and get back uh, to growth. So it is very important to know that first, Greece can make it. I know that a lot of uh, you have your own doubts. Allow me to say, I know the Greek people very well. I know how good they can react, how good entrepreneurs they are, and how they can work hard in creating a new uh, economy, which is what we need. The second, uh, um, the second point I would like to make is what Eva Hofstadt said about the possibility to build up a consensus. This program is based on more public uh, sector cuts and more tax cuts. It means that it might be the basis for both big parties to agree on it. For Nea Democratia, the argument is that uh, she wants uh, uh, more uh, tax cuts. Uh, for PASOK, they uh, have to deal with their own problem, which is the big public sector. It means we might have here a proposal which would be a basis for national consensus. The Greek people are very, very angry with their politicians. They are very, very angry with their political system. They are furious. A hundred thousand of them are every day on the Sindagma place. They feel that they deserve another responsibility of their political leaders. So that's the proposal of the Democratic Alliance today. We propose a program which might find the agreement of both parties. And we urge all our partners in the Greek Parliament to support the, a difficult austerity program, but an austerity program which has also, as Kiefer Hofstadt rightly says, the second track, the track of investment the track of growth. We need both. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, we Greeks have a very long history. Most of you know at least part of it. We have dealt with many crises. It's not our first. And I hope that it will be our last. But every time we tried and made the crisis to an opportunity, that's what we want to do today. We want to change this crisis to an opportunity for a new start for the Greek people, for the Greek economy, and for what we owe also as Europeans to Europe. 
We are an integral part of the European Union. We want to be at the center of the European Union. We want to be proud again. And that's the effort which we will be, which we will be making. Thank you very much. We have a, a micro here, right? so it's a really professional uh, room. Right? So it's not Les investissements 
ça ne vient pas quand tout le monde parle chaque jour que la Grèce va faire faillite. Ce qu'on a besoin alors de l'Union européenne, c'est un message très clair qu'elle ne va pas laisser la Grèce faire faillite, point. Et pour que toutes les spéculations qui, ont, qui sont faites aujourd'hui sur la Grèce et, et tous les, les, les gens qui spéculent perdent leur argent, on sera ravis. Et puis après, laisser la Grèce recommencer sur une autre base. Bien sûr, ce sera une autre base. Une base euh, euh, vraiment à, à, saine. Uh, EFSF system, the whole system is blocked. It can be the true fence, 
it can be Slova Slovakia, it can be tomorrow Slovenia, or another country, I don't know. But it can't work uh, in the future in a sustainable way. And so we are simply, what we have done uh, since 18 months is after uh, 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 um, uh, these declarations in December 2009, we are only reacting to events that are happening on the financial markets. And we have no proactive vision of what has to be done uh, in the future. Even today, when we are talking in the European Parliament about a stronger and bolder stability pact in which the Commission can launch itself measures and sanctions, there are still people who are thinking that's not necessary, that we can still continue with the old order, eh, in, uh, as we have known it uh, since the start uh, of uh, the Euro. And so that is the reason also why we have presented today this plan, in saying we cannot go forward like this. There is a global approach needed in which we recognize that bondholders, member states of the Eurozone, and first of all the Greeks have, have to, do, to, to, to do methods. And we describe the methods. But not only in a defensive way, also in an offensive way. In saying they shall never recover in Greece is there is no chapter on growth and investment. Don't believe it. You cannot solve problems of public finance with a negative economic growth. If you can show me that, that it can happen, okay, then uh, maybe I'll lose my job as leader of the Avaldilan, but in, in any way, it didn't happen in the past. You need both of them, and that is what we presented. A bolder approach of the reforms in Greece, which two-thirds of the efforts on expenditures was not enough today in the, in the proposals of the, of the Greek government, and on the other side, Europe giving guarantees to private, I, I'm underlining what also Theodoros has said, private private uh, uh, investment. Well, as, a, as a Greek German and a German Greek, because you put the point of uh, the Greek German tragedy, it is a German Greek tragedy. If Chancellor Merkel would, in December 2009, have said, Greece will be, is safe, full stop, we wouldn't talk about this. The markets, and that's what Dora Bakoyani pointed out in the group meeting we had uh, this morning, uh, made it very clear the markets wouldn't have reacted like that. I think, and I invite my fellow German citizens to become a little bit more his historical. If you have a look at the 1953 debt agreement on Germany and the major haircut which was done that time on German debts that were, if you compare them, much higher than the debts of Greece now. Combined with the Marshall Plan, you understand what we mean. This, what we uh, present to you here, is a combination of an approach like the world community, especially the Europeans, did it on Germany in 1953, combined with an investment plan. Full stop. And the Germans should understand that the Greek debt is just a big, a small part, just a small part of their problems at that time and become more historical again. Uh, so you're, you're still, yeah. 
Um, then finally, just very, very quickly, um, more fundamental question. Um, does the EU have the capacity to deal with a failed state within its borders? And that's a question for Mr. Verhofstadt. Well, let me start by asking, we are not a failed state. And we will not be a failed state. Uh, there are the, uh, to your first question, are they liberals? No, they are not. They are angry Greeks with, with, from many different political uh, opinions or ideologies. What they are mainly are asking from the Greek political system and from the Greek politicians some credible answers. And I'm afraid they're not getting them yet. And what they are also asking is that uh, the Greek pol politicians unite and put their Greece's uh, interests in front of their party interests. So that's the first thing. The second, you are asking me, uh, is, are the Greeks paying less taxes than they should, practically? The answer is yes. But not because the taxes are not high enough, but because the Greeks are not paying so the high taxes. So the, the, the answer there is we need less taxes, but which everybody pays. And that's what we need in Greece. Because if you tax 45% an, on the, an entrepreneur in Greece today, and you have Bulgaria with 10% in the north, and uh, Cyprus with 11% uh, uh, nearby, why would somebody invest in Greece to pay 45% taxes? So what is needed is that for Greece to be competitive. To, uh, for us to be competitive, we have to lower our taxes. But of course, that means that we have to make sure that everybody pays them, that the, the tax um, collecting system is radically changed. And that's what our party also proposes. Because for today, the situation is that practically the same people, which means that the people who get pensions, the people who are on uh, uh, monthly allowances, they are the only ones who pay taxes. So that's not a good idea for a state. So we have to change it. That's why the Democratic Alliance says, yes, we have to make the changes. Yes, we have to have the political courage to support these changes. But on the other side, we need what Kiefer Hofstadt said before. The European Union has shown in this crisis, not only for Greece, it is also the crisis itself. What was the case the last 10 years after we had the Euro? They were the good days. They were the golden days. Everybody felt that we had the possibility of loans, of, of uh, an economy who was running, etc. We were not prepared for the crisis as Europe. And when the crisis came, we showed the lack of leadership as Europeans. And then what happened, what normally happens for all persons, when you have a big problem, you go back to yourself, you close up to yourself, you don't open. It is the joy which you want to share, the grief you keep to yourself. That's what happened to Europe. The countries became more nationalistic than European. But what we needed at the crisis was more Europe, not less Europe. We needed to face the crisis with more European vision than less European vision. So that's what we need today. It would be really a pity if our generation of European leaders would lose the European vision because of some kind of economic crisis. The Euro is strong, the European vision is strong, the Eurozone is strong. Yes, we have our problems in parts of Europe, but we will overcome them. And then we will be all stronger. So that's the message I would like at least today. A question for Mr. Verhofstadt and one for Mrs. Bergogianis. Uh, it certainly looks like a very bold plan, perhaps too bold for Greece and for Europe. Um, have you discussed it uh, with the Troika? Do you think it can, you can convince the Troika to support such a plan? 
and also you seem to suggest a Brady Bond style solution for Greece. Do you think uh, ECB uh, uh, would support something like that? And for Mrs. Pakogiani, uh, would you support uh, to fire people from the public sector and how many of them? And uh, you mentioned um, a lack of leadership. Back in 2008, 2009, you were in the government then. I don't remember you uh, saying anything about the current crisis. Well, we have predicted a crisis uh, in the uh, financial crisis and the economic crisis and the debt crisis. Yeah, uh, it should be a double prize winner, I think. Uh, uh, I don't uh, remember any uh, national authority since 2008 predicting the crisis. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we finally agreed after a long battle to create European authorities. Because these uh, 27 national authorities were not capable to predict uh, anything uh, of what we uh, have lived through. And then on the substance of your question, uh, we proposing two types of solutions, but concerning the part of the bottle that you were talking about, or we can go further in the idea of prolonging the period of the loan. So there's a swap of, of actual bonds on three year, on five year, and for example, bonds on, on a longer period, seven years, for example, that, that could be uh, a possibility. Uh, I have added, uh, we have added uh, also another possibility that's to change uh, from, from green bonds that are triple C, for example, to triple A EFSN bonds, but in a smaller part. So you give, for example, 100 of, of, uh, of green bonds and you receive 60. Uh, of, uh, of uh, triple A uh, bonds. And we think that maybe the second is a better solution than the first because in the first year, which you'll still continue with uh, green bonds in your portfolio, and that can still create an, uh, uh, the, 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 the problem when you have uh, uh, EFSF bonds and you are sure uh, to have a more stable portfolio. Uh, that's the reason. So that's to the specialist to, to, to see what is, what is possible and what is needed, but it's absolutely uh, clear that you need to create stability uh, in the markets uh, on, on that uh, issue and it seems to me that this whole uh, discussion about voluntary and not voluntary is a completely stupid discussion about the sex of ages. Let me just say and uh, add that yes, we will present the program to Oliran, we will talk to the Troika, we don't believe that there is nothing to be done about the consolidation program the government has proposed. And uh, I believe that after today's position also of the ALDE group, this is important uh, with, for the discussions, which also the Greek government will have, but also us about this program so that it might have more chances to be successful. On the second question, if a Hofstadt statement covers me, if I would be able in uh, 2007 to foresee the crisis, well, I would, even 2008, I will ask Mr. Pisaridis for his Nobel uh, on economy. I think I would deserve it. The truth is, we didn't know. We didn't have the full picture of it, but we have it now. And today, we don't have any alibi. That's why today, at least, we have to show the political courage to, to take our responsibilities towards the Greek people. I have at least six more people wanting to ask questions, but Mrs. Bakriani needs to go to present a plan to Oli Ren, amongst other things. So I'm going to let her go, and the others will stay around to much. answer your questions. Mrs. Kiyakakis will answer any quick question on the Democratic Alliance. Thank you. 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 A question on tax policy. Are you supportive of Daniel Cohn-Bendit's call to freeze Greek assets in banks in Austria, Luxembourg, Switzerland? And on the opposite, what do you think of the question of a tax amnesty to convince those people who have put their assets abroad to bring it back to Greece? Uh, maybe I can answer the others uh, to, the, to the second uh, solution. 
seems to be more intelligent than the first. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, uh, Greeks, like everybody else, are European citizens, so we must be very careful on what we do uh, in legal terms. Uh, and we should uh, try to find real solutions to uh, real problems. On tax amnesty, I believe uh, and our party believes that we need lower taxes, not giving people benefits for not paying their past taxes. So the solution is not to look into the past and do a patch up of getting some money into the country for a couple of years or something like that, but moving to a new era, to the next yeah. era. Uh, 
should the money come from the uh, EIB or uh, uh, wherever? And the last question to Mr. Skudakakis. Um, do we expect the end of the Papa Mario government within the next uh, weeks or months? And second question, do the people in the Sintagma place, uh, from your viewpoint, uh, represent a minority, an erratic minority of the Greek people, or do they represent a majority? For us in Germany, it's very difficult to understand uh, who they represent. Thank you. Uh, to start, where does the money come from? Greece has on the accounts of the European Union funds, cohesion funds, uh, social fund, regional funds, some 18 billion of money not used up to now, and they have another three years of time. They can't use that money because there's no co-financing at the moment, one problem. The other problem, the um, projects that have been introduced or presented are not eligible. Now, what we say is, uh, you have the possibility to use the so-called revolving funds by the EIB, European Investment Bank, to cover the co-financing. The bank gets the money back in, the, in some years, but the project that will be funded will of course have revenue. That's, uh, that's very pretty obvious. But in our proposal, we say we should get some money of the next financial period that Greece will have access to after 2013 now. So in order to get a 30 billion euro package for investment now, not to cover debts for investment. And the other uh, income comes from the privatization. 25% of any income of privatization program will go into that fund. Uh, that also makes it easier for the Greeks to accept privatization. Because if it just would go to, to uh, cover debts, it would be very hard for Greece to accept uh, selling out their country in quotation marks. Thank you. Let me start by finishing up on, on what you said. Uh, the, the package of the cohesion funds was created before the crisis for Greece. We are talking about a totally different economy today. So it makes sense to change the rules when, for this specific case, where it's obvious that what investments were planned before are irre irrelevant today. Today we need more private investment. We need to, to use the money to mobilize private investment, to get people working. There's no other way that we can pay back on that. Now, also privatization, it's important for this not to happen in fire sales. We should not have fire sales for Greek assets. People that are expecting money from uh, uh, the privatization fund, and even in our proposal it's 75% the people that have given money to Greece will not gain from fire sales. They will gain from a proper privatization program that sells when it's a good time to sell. Uh, we believe in selling, but selling in a sensible way. Now, Papandreou government. Papandreou government almost cracked last week. Papandreou himself proposed uh, a national unity government to Samaras, the leader of your democracy. Samaras uh, uh, asked him to step down. Initially, he accepted to step down, but then Samaras also asked him to have a two, three month government uh, 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 and then elections, which would be a, a, a very negative thing for Greece because long election period will destroy total public finances. And Papadreou backtracked. Now he has, uh, he, he put Mr. Venizelos, who was his main rival, uh, into government as finance minister and vice president. They have, they have bought some time in political terms, but it's an extremely difficult situation. Andrea now is also proposing a, a referendum in, in autumn, so we have limited time with a government that is so weak. We need a national unity government, and a way to get a national unity government would be a really strong sensible European package that can be offered to Greece and Greece should take it by consensus uh, only. And finally, uh, people in, in, in Sindakon Square, obviously if you look at uh, women polls, they are a radicalized minority but expressing a lot of anger and feelings by the great majority of the people. So one must 
politically sensible when he listens to them. There are also people from the extreme right and the extreme left that are trying to hijack uh, the St. Amman Square uh, uh, demonstrations. Uh, but people are in the street. They are giving a message. You don't have to uh, uh, follow the message. You have to understand and implement a different policy than uh, the message is that answers the message, not follows the message. Uh, it's nuanced what I told you. Uh, it's they have, they are more radicalized than the average Greek citizen, but they have a common anger that goes all through the Greek uh, uh, population. And important disorientation, because what they've been hearing from Europe are different voices, different voices, because that the European way you know very well making decisions, uh, which is debating them and all voices being heard. In this case, it has to, uh, uh, to come to an end, to come to a bold decision that will resolve the problem. And what is the essence of this, it is that it's bolder than what's on the table up till now. Till now, we've been giving, Europe has been giving half solutions and creating double pro problems. You have to give a bold solution and Older on the austerity, it is more, I think, uh, a creative future because there is a chapter on investment, and you could use it to create political consensus in Greece and say, you have this positive package if you agree to support it. So that's, uh, that's the move that we need for now. I think all the sandwiches for everyone outside, so please take one with you if you're leaving. Or Take one and stick around. Ask any additional questions to any of the panelists who will be around. For